The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too This is the introduction to the program. Uh, we've been doing our introduction, the set, like the very beginning, the same way for 500 and however fucking many episodes. Wait, are we in it now? <laughs> yeah, this is the show. Oh, I want right. to start. We're going to start the show, uh-huh. but we're going to do it different. And oh. we have to organically find that. All right. And it can't be a bit. It can't be a bit. No. It's got to be like practiced. Sounding good, but it's just got to organically happen without me sort of taking control and, le- and steering as I have as the Capitan. Okay, let me try it. Can I try something? Can I just pitch something right off the bat? It's, if you're going to make a strategy or a plan for how okay, to cope right. with this, you can't. It's just got to be like... You feel it. We talk in our book, uh, uh, Everybody Has a Podcast Except You, in theaters January 2021. 20, <laughs> if, uh, if you sneak it into the theater, yeah. technically. <laughs> you gotta have a plan. It's the for... only book that that also works as a mask, so you can just wear it when you go to the theater. That's People probably... think it sounds organic when you start, um, you know, doing a show. It sounds natural and organic, and I just want to see what organically happens without a strategy for how to begin the program. Well, who's right. that talking? That's my older brother, Justin McElroy. Hey, Trav, thanks for, uh, see, I... No, you buckled. fucked it up. All right, no, I time, fucked it up. Justin, Justin, it's time for the weekly joke. It's time for Justin's joke of the week. Now, we would definitely introduce ourselves in this new introduction. Well, this is before Travis and I introduce ourselves. You <laughs> yeah. historically have done Justin's... Justin's... Uh, Justin, some, it used to be called Justin's Naughty Joke of the Week, and it was usually <laughs> a joke <laughs> it was of the nature. It was ribbled. It was okay. like a sexual joke. There's like dir- no like dirty as fuck, like some real dock worker shit. <laughs> There's no reality in which uh, this podcast, this new podcast pack, podcast intro that we're forging would start with, <laughs> before our names, a naughty joke of well, the Well, not world. anymore. No, no we're going to do, joke. me and, Tra- I swear to Christ, Justin, me and Travis are going to say our names. But for, but first, we do like, <laughs> yeah. hey, oh, oh and this is, our, okay. this is our oldest brother, Justin, and Justin, you swing in there and you're like, <laughs> here's a joke, I, here's one I heard, have you heard this, here's one I heard this week. Dirty. This dirtier. isn't a joke, it's just dirtier. A, no, no, it's not Justin's dirty joke. It's not that anymore. It's just a regular joke. Hey, um, this isn't a joke. Sorry, just, just to clarify, it can still be dirty. It just doesn't have to be dirty, it Justin. To it's, be, I want to give you be. room. I just to work. wanted to start with a fun fact. Did okay. you hear about that? Um, the sarcophagus over in Egypt that they found that had been open for two thousand years. You hear about this? No. Yeah, there's this uh, sarcophagus that been, been that they opened it and been closed for. Uh, 2,500 years, and here's the wild part. Yeah. The body inside was uh, covered in chocolate and nuts. They think it might have been Pharaoh Roche. Huh. So that's... I <laughs> did like them better when you were like, what's the difference between Could you nine? say like, and he had a boner? Sorry, because you mentioned <laughs> yes, nuts, yeah, and that yeah. was really close, but if it's like he was covered in chocolate and nuts, and he had like a boner. Oh, sorry, let me set you, let me set you up for that juice, and we'll cut all the stuff that yeah. between this out. Did you say nuts? <laughs> There it is. What and what was that sound, Justin? Was it the mummy's boner? Was it the mummy's bo- m- mummy's boner? Was it your boner? What he was? He couldn't. That? Oh, oh. Okay, wait. Hold on. Well, let's, Why, let's do it again. Let's do the. I'll, uh, uh, and let's just keep it smooth. Did you just say nuts? Why was the, Why was the teenage mummy so nervous in class? Why he couldn't keep his boner under wraps? Okay. All right. So you're okay. Kind of, Stop. Stop. That's, that can't be your thing, too, Trav. I know, but... <laughs> your thing can't also be dirty mummy jokes. But it's all I know, Justin. Or Griffin? Maybe you're Justin now. 
This nobody knows because we haven't introduced ourselves. Well, you've introduced. We know one thing. I'm not Justin. I don't. They don't know who the fuck I am, but they know I'm not Justin because I haven't been telling dirty mummy jokes. That's Are you the teenage teenage Why did you guys decide putting me on blast would be the the bit for the introduction? My introduction that I wanted to do was coming up with a new introduction. For this the show, Justin, yeah, it's, you put yourself on blast. I teed you up. I said, "This is my older brother, Justin," and then you choked. And as punishment, we tried to make you shine. Okay, I've paid my penance. Starting fresh. Okay, the person has just pressed play on their podcatcher and action. Why was the teenage mummy nervous in class? <laughs> now wait a minute. Why, Why the are fuck you trying to poach? Cold open. <laughs> are you poaching the mummy boner? Sort of. Well, if we're restarting now, we've edited it out when Justin was like the. Dirty we've mummy. edited out all of it. This yeah. is just the introduction for the podcast. Justin you understand? isn't the dirty mummy boy anymore, so I saw an opportunity to take it now. That but it. you haven't said your name. It was cold open. It's a cold open. They, they don't, don't open. Have a Justin, cold they don't fucking open up Saturday Night Live like, hey, everybody, it's me, Skellen Jokesman. And uh, yeah, today I'm going to be doing <laughs> Reince Priebus. <laughs> Reince Priebus back in the news. Reince, you hear about this? <laughs> you hear about this? <laughs> that's gonna, that's, I call dibs on that. My thing is talking about what Reince is up to. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I hear he drives a Prius. Okay, let's uh, let's cut all this. Let's, let's cut, cut all this. this. this, this obviously is just it. press play and action. Why was the teenage Ryan's previous <laughs> nervous okay, in class? Stop. What? You can't you? We he couldn't to, keep it, his boner under wraps. Okay, okay. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna grant you that. Oh, that Ryan's, would be the Ryan's previous was a mummy. <laughs> okay, Trap. Do your do your joke again. Okay. I'm gonna lean into it a little bit better. Okay. And I'm sorry for shutting you down. The person presses play on their podcatcher, and this is what they hear. Why was the teenage Ryan Priebus, who was also a mummy, nervous in class? Because he couldn't keep his boner under wraps? Fuck! <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to my brother, my brother, and me. <laughs> Wait, okay. You're right. Okay. That didn't, Trav, that didn't work. Fuck. Griffin, I'd love for you to try one. Yeah, sure. And so, the person presses play and action. Do you guys remember Rich Priebus? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I don't think we got it. I think I did it too fast. Did you guys hear this latest? Oh, wait, I kind of like that. Start the music and yeah. Justin cut the music and Griffin will come in strong like a hee-haw moment. Okay, so yeah. the very first thing they'll hear is this uh, uh, this and intro guys, music that comes loaded on the Roadcaster Pro. Yeah. But do, no, mat no matter fucking what, we aren't doing another take. This is the intro right this here no it. matter what. Swear it. Justin, swear it on your life. I'll swear it, but no I, let me just get the flow. Okay. B block me through it, because right. I think we're so close to you something the, new. You do the fucking music. I hop in there with a sick ass joke. I mean, there's got to be a hard stop, no fade out. It's like music, yeah. and then. But nothing. no matter what, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I start the music. Yeah, and then I'll do my fade joke. it down. We'll you bring in a joke. I fade it. Back no, no up. fade. No fade out. Hard stop. No, fade it louder and louder and louder until it comes to a dead stop. What? And three, two, one, play. Did you guys see here this one? Ah, oh, fuck. Are you on Mike Griffin? This is Griffin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Justin McElroy. I think in post that's gonna sound really good. Yeah. yeah. We'll just gotta tighten it up and sweeten it a little bit. Yeah, so there's uh, a little dead air, but I think if we could get out some of the tinniness. I did not notice the, the dead air, Travis. That's, I'm so glad your ear is uh in the show because I, I did not notice it. I noticed it only because Griffin had to specifically call my name to tell me to talk. That yeah. was the only reason I caught that almost, there was some dead space. Almost always a bad sign. Yeah, yeah, For yeah, the flow yeah. of the show. All right, mm. let's do some fucking questions. Fuck yes. Yeah, I bet people thought that was going to be the whole episode. I bet mm. it could feel that way sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. But it never, That's a never I think is. that I, I think that, can I say something? I think that part of the reason people struggle with the introductions to this program sometimes and why it is uh, put off 
I would estimate at this point innumerable listeners. Yeah. Uh, new listeners to the program. And old listeners. Yeah, I like to I like to think that some of them got off uh, <laughs> the ship at some point. But, you know, I think a lot of people try. They're like, I've heard about this show. I'm going to start it. I think the pro- part of the problem with the introductions is that a few times we have started an introduction that has become an entire episode. And I think that now when you're listening to the introduction, there's this back of your throat fear right. that this could be the whole episode. And it's, yeah. Honestly, Juice, it's kind of fucked up that you are continuing to suspend those sensitive listeners to right. that fear. I am sorry. I'm sorry. This is show. <laughs> show has... Be gone. Recently, a couple of friends invited me to do an escape room with them. It was kind of fun. So when they asked me again the next week, I agreed to do another one. Now they're calling the three of us an escape room team oh, and want to do them as often as twice a week, traveling across the country to different ones. I got a name for your team, the Super Spreaders. As much as I've mildly enjoyed oh, doing it. these puzzles and unlocking things, I'm clearly not into this as the others and need a polite way of telling them I don't want to be in the team. Note, a lot of rooms require a minimum three people. So me not being there means they can't do a lot of rooms. Bothers. Brother, sorry. <laughs> That's right. It's supposed to be brothers. Oh, bother. How do I escape from this escape room team? Sick of solving puzzles in Scotland. You know, I just, you just said that about the super spreaders, but I will say Scotland is, I believe, in a somewhat better place. Than everywhere we are. is. Yeah. Um, I why would an escape room have a minimum of people that could participate? They charge per head, eh? So, well, but they, I mean, at that point, just charge a minimum. Say, like, if one, hey, if you want to come, Travis, and do an escape that room asshole? by yourself. Well, I guess it's. I guess. I mean, you did say your own name. It would be me. I did want to say, before I knew that you volunteered for this, who's that asshole that's like, no one else, come in. I'm going to do this one by myself. Well, if they're going to do a bad job, listen, this is the thing. I have done, I have done many, many escape rooms. Uh, yeah. And I would say, specifically, Adol Rafai and I have done a lot of escape rooms together. Okay. If we are at a convention at the same time, we will do escape rooms. Now, have we done escape rooms where there have been, uh, let's say, some dead weight on the team? Yeah, yeah totally, totally, totally. But uh, the two of us can carry it. You know what I mean? I don't know where oh. I'm going with this. I just wanted to brag about how good Adel Rafai and I are at escape rooms. Good. Mm-hmm. People love that. I think that you're very uh, lucky to be, if I could be, if I had the kind of life where I could even entertain the fucking idea of being part of a quote, escape room team, end quote, I would celebrate. I would celebrate. I would say a thank you prayer every morning and every night before bedtime for the cool life that I had where I could go and solve the puzzles of puzzle masters across this great country of ours or world, this fucking globe of ours. I I, I know this isn't helpful, but change your whole fucking outlook because I, you, you should like this more. I mean, it's something, isn't it? I, yeah. If you go into an escape room, you know what the nicest thing about escape rooms are? What? If you go into an escape room, by definition, you haven't been there before. You know what I mean? Like, wow. at least it's new room. That's the, I never want to leave. This is new room. Mm-hmm. I'm this so is, excited to be here. Let me let me reframe your thinking question, Asker, of oh, why escape you. rooms are the greatest fucking things in the world. All around us, in what I'm going to call real world, non-escape rooms... There are problems that are completely unquantifiable. In escape room? What's this? Red book goes on the green bookshelf and something open? That is a quantifiable, solvable problem yeah. that when you've solved it, you can feel a little bit better about anything. life. Feel anything. Feel anything in the escape room. Ooh, that's a good tagline for Griffin's escape rooms. Come in. Feel something. <laughs> feel it. <laughs> Switch that light switch on and off three times, and I'll come on over the loudspeaker. I'll be like, "You fucking did it! Feel it! <laughs> <laughs> Embrace this novelty!" Did I would you, be. Did you their... hear that box click open? That's joy in your heart, my friend. It would be me in the escape room with a group of super solvers, 
with like my fam we did an escape i can't remember we were on tour last year we did an escape room back when tour was a thing we could do an escape room and leave house was things we could do mm-hmm. and we solved it real fast we got out of there like 38 minutes there was a lot of time left which I, one was this this was in this was when we were on tour in milwaukee at the city 13 city, city 13 th- yes and it was city that 13. kind of like a uh, post punk like, like uh, cyberpunk diner, bar yeah, cyberpunk. diner shit. Oh. Yeah, it was dope. We got out of there real fast. But these days, I probably would have like had a hand on the doorknob at 38 minutes. Like, do you guys just want to just... fucking kick it for the for tw- We'll do 21 minutes and 50 seconds left in here yeah. and then leave when we absolutely have to. But maybe we could just like explore the space. Sniff it's the new. air. It's new. It's maybe new. we can leave more problems than we solve. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, create some new ones. Do you think it's a hard, you know, a bearable, dangerous situation is when there's a fire at an escape room place? Not because the doors are locked or anything, because as we all know, the doors are not locked. It's the biggest lie they ever told. Wait, what? But, yeah. Yeah, you so, just open it. If the fire alarm starts going off and you're doing an escape room, you're going to be like, huh, huh okay. How did I? Hey, hey, Valerie, do that again. Step on that again, because maybe it'll turn it off. I don't know what it means. Count the flashes. That is the thing, by the I wonder how there's got to be a study somewhere on how doing fire drills has ruined anybody's reaction to actual like fire alarms. Because yeah. now as an adult, if I'm in a place and I hear a fire alarm, the first words out of my mouth are, it's probably not real. Oh, what an asshole. Mm. What, what asshole did this? I think if I ran an escape room and I was staffing up, I would hire somebody and the first day would be business as usual. I'd be like, you lock up tonight. And then when they tried to leave that night, they would find that the front door was locked from the outside. Okay. The test, the true test begins now. I am almost certain. I am describing the plot of the escape room horror movie. I think that's true. If I was, if I was hiring for an escape room, I would hire a plant that uh, anytime a group started, you know, they go in there with 10, suddenly there's 11 people, but there's a lot going on, so maybe they don't notice the extra person. And the extra person's job is to just go like, I don't think we're going to solve this one, guys. And just like really talk up how hard the puzzles are and like, oh, wait, hold on. Well, no, no, this isn't doing it. Fuck, I thought we had it. No, That's I don't good. think we're solving and this could, one, guys. At some point, they could pretend to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and hey, they would use their core fill to... Um, Oh, it's not. To turn sunlight into energy. It's not a real plant, Justin. Goes to visit his mommy. Oh, right. Can him I say well. one other thing? Can I help can the person? Can we do one thing? Has concerns he it's forgets really, them. It's really, actually, Juice, can I say you can't? It's re- It would be fucking wild to interrupt Travis now. And remembers being <sighs> It feels wrong to do, but I did want to say something. Just that the team will know if you don't want to do it. Because your puzzle performance will we'll be yeah. will suffer. Playing under the table and fishing. Welcome to Under the Table and Fishing. Was he eating a sandwich? Was Dave eating a full uh, turkey always. wrap? Okay. Oh, I was eating a sandwich. It was an egg salad. Can you try? And this is just <laughs> a this is just a really good opportunity for you to bust out like a. I don't eat too much. I eat too much. Drink wow, too fuck. much. I want too <laughs> much. <laughs> Too much. How did Dave Matthews' picnic get ruined? Wow. How? All the ants marching. All <laughs> and right. they had boners? <laughs> All over it. Their dicks were out. Their okay. Little ant dicks. Yeah. So. Yeah, dude. I, 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 in Under the Table and Fishing, I'm going to read you some lyrics. They right. might be Dave Matthews. They might be fish. And this week, special twist, there's one by Third Eye Blind. All okay, right. I know I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna bloodhound that one out. So let's start. Don't let it get away. And if we did, we're gonna get it back. And in time, you and me, we will, we will, we will, we will be over and again and again. That's Dave. That feels fish. That feels fish. That is Dave Matthews again uh-huh. and again. All right. Let's see. I've been prepping for this segment by listening to every Dave Matthews song and every uh, fish song. And does anybody oh, that's have wildly that? Sad. Advil. <laughs> Tra- Travis, can I do my joke, please? Oh, sure, 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 sure. Um, uh, I've been prepping for this segment by listening to every Dave Matthews band song and every fish song, and I, I have now I have the munchies. <sighs> 
<laughs> wow, man. Oh, man. Fucking yeah. Nice. Dude, yeah. I guess I just don't follow Justin. Pass the incense. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Bang, bang. You're dead now. Could be real. I got a bag of smoke. Come on. Let's make a deal. Yeah. Fish, fish, fish. fish. Yeah, bridges burn, but tomorrow is another day to Dave. feed the world and go outside and play. No, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flipping on it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with fish. That is Dave. I thought, I uh, say God. he twisted it on me. He thought I want to write the first stanza as though I were fish, and the second stanza as though I were Dave. Mm -hmm. We built a kingdom out of lies. And then we blindly fanned the fires. We warmed our hands with glowing coals, but now they rain down from the skies. Third eye. Blind. Third eye blind. Yeah, third eye blind. That is fish. Damn. The song oh is God. leaves. I am over three right now. I used you to be are. good at this game. Because of you, girl, beautiful, beautiful girl, take Damn. it easy on yourself <laughs> and make it easy on me. Because I just want to make you. I just want to make you come on, come on, come on, come. That's that's. For, for the it's, like, look, it's, like, it's not fish. It's not fish. I'm going to suppose that it is one of Dave Matthews's many songs about yeah, fingering. Dave, it's so Dave. He is, <laughs> that is one of Dave's hornier tracks. It's, it's called of... "Come On, Come On." Okay, so that's four for Justin. One for Griffin. In case you're wondering, yes, Crash is one of the fingering champs. He yes, of course. He written oh, 100%. Press oh, me baby. down, then I pressurize, then I rise up. Like diamonds, rise up all you diamonds. So rise up, rise up all you diamonds. Pressure, rise all you diamonds. Third Eye, it, feel, it doesn't feel like Fisher, Dave Matthews fan, so I am going to hit Third Eye Blind on this one. I want uh, third eye blind. It is third eye blind. Correct. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There is the tower, like a solitary flower, standing in the snow. All the wolves, all as the wolves all wait below, and you're walking on the ledge, throwing bread crusts off the edge. That feels fishy to me. I was thrown at first because the use of tower and then flower made me feel like this is probably a phallic sexual Dave Matthews song mm -hmm. about sex. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am going to switch to fish. It is fish. The song yeah. Is okay. Yeah. And I do want to point out to you, Dave Matthews songs aren't phallic. No. He only writes about fingering. Yeah. <laughs> well, a finger could be a okay, tower as fine. well, I, I mean, guess. I guess. Sure. Okay. Yes. It's no. It's not what anybody's thinking of. Let's be honest. I love your hair in the mornings. You know, you love to run wild and let the mane flow, but you run away. But we meet again soon, south of the border and over the moon. Dave Matthews, man. Fish. That's fish shade. Wow. It was, and I could tell because it was kind of horny, but not. It doesn't. It, Dave's gonna finish. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my question. Okay. Are all song lyrics the same, or do the two of them just have some a, a lot of crossover tonally? I think that the reason I do this whole segment is because they have a lot of crossover tonally, Justin. Um. All right. I got. I got. I'm gonna do this Yahoo now. It's standing by Merritt Palmer, the prospector. Thank you, prospector. Uh, it is from Yahoo Answers user Christopher who asks, and this one might be kind of quick. Should the laugh track on sitcoms be just one person instead of a crowd of laughter? Ooh. Now, do you guys think they mean one person across all sitcoms or one person per sitcom? The, you mean the same person? Yes. Is it like Dave's hmm. track and Dave okay. does the laugh for everyone? Or is it like, well, Dave goes with friends... And like Steven goes well, with Big Bang Theory. I am interested in the idea of the laugher being someone we like become familiar with as right? a nation. Like I, this I is like yeah. This is Terrence and but they can't the problem is 
there's never an episode of Big Bang Theory where the audience isn't super into it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? They're loving it. That should be a thing. It's like there's an episode of Big Bang Theory where just Sheldon does his thing. Like, he, you know, he, pull, he pisses his pants and then he's like, bazinga. And the audience is just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but think about that, right? Like, t- usually Terrence is loving it, right? But yeah. then there's an episode where the thing Sheldon did, you thought was pretty funny. But Terrence didn't seem as a Yeah, so what's that mean? What's that and mean? It's like, is Terrence okay? What's going on? That with is th- the problem, right? Is you would start to have more insight and probably concern mm. about the real man Terrence right. yeah. than, than, than you would about the bazing guys and the bazing gals over at Big Bang Theory. And I think eventually that. you would end up like with campaigning to get the camera back at the back of the audience so I could see Terrence wow. in his chair while I'm watching. Well, them do you know their science and like jokes about the Green Lantern and stuff? But th- we're talking about multi-camera sitcoms, Travis. That's going to be a tough nut to tough nut to putt. That's well, a just, cool. You have to aim cool them mission. all Can through. Can we just Terrence? take a second to appreciate "tough nut to putt" as the new powerful <laughs> slogan for something? I think maybe instead we just get at the top of every episode of every sitcom, we get about two minutes interview with Terrence. Yeah, just to see how he's doing, and most of the time. I imagine this is sort of a poet laureate position, uh, sort of venerated where we can trust his sort of opinions about about comedy and jokes and laughing at stuff. So when he sits up there and he's like, hey guys, it's me, Terrence, all strapped in, ready for another fucking great episode of Big, they wouldn't say fucking, but ready for ready to laugh at another great no, episode maybe, of Big Bang maybe Theory. Maybe with Terrence, there's no censorship. We want oh, unbridled, unfiltered Terrence. Okay, but then you know like, okay, so if Terrence laughs during this one, it's okay for me and all my pals at this Big Bang party that I'm throwing, mm-hmm. um, which is gonna, which is a Big Bang Theory watch party, and then we're all gonna have, we're all gonna fuck later. Uh, it, it's okay for us to laugh, but then if you see an interview with him before an episode of uh, Frasier Two, and he's like, "Ah, hey guys, yeah, my cat's sick." Anyway, so let's get on with the show. Oh and you, boy! Then you know, like, it's okay that I'm laughing when Terrence doesn't. Do you think that the risk would become that TV shows would start to be developed specifically with Terrence in mind? Where it'd be like, what's Terrence like? What's him? We got to get in front of Terrence, people. Tell me the name of Terrence's third grade teacher. Give me all the information you can on Terrence. Do you you guys think there is a static number of days Mm -hmm. after the series finale of Big Bang Theory, at which point we will stop referencing Big Bang Theory as an ongoing concern. Well, because currently, yeah. by my math, it has been roughly um, maybe 450 days okay. by the calendar since the fun- final episode on May 16th, 2019. Can I tell you the problem here, Jamie? Problem is... I think I know the problem, Trav, Is that I can't but, think of another TV show? Right. Yeah. I, are there other ones that are going on right now? Not on that scale. I mean, listen, we can talk about Supernatural, but that's not a multi-camera comedy. Again, please don't talk about Supernatural. I'm just saying it's been a year and a half since. First off, do you guys feel like... <laughs> okay. Do you feel like the nation mourned Big Bang Theory enough? I don't think because they, yeah. everyone has been very excited about Big Bang Theory's existence, but did the nation mourn no. B- Big Bang Theory's passion? Because I feel like I didn't see the sort of funeral for a friend proceedings that one would expect from the you know saying goodbye to well, characters I think here. we're in the stage where, you know, a loved one passes and you spend a lot of time watching old hold home movies. Like, mm. and, and like just remember, except in this case, it's like 800 episodes of reruns, you know? Yeah. So it takes a while to get through those home movies before you're like, uh, you know what? I don't really miss that loved one anymore. That's it. It's going to come to mm. us uh, 2035 when someone's going to accidentally say Bazinga. And yeah. it'll be like, oh, and then the cavity will feel it. And just just to answer your question with another perspective, it has been, to my actual math, nearly 6,000 
thousand days since Frasier went off the air. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but I think when we talk about Frasier, it is tinged with a a that where the age is folded into the rhythm. Right. And okay. I feel like Big Bang Theory is our reach for current <laughs> Okay. <laughs> fair? Okay. This I is see. a fair point, Justin, because I did go I when I first started this, I said something about friends and I thought, but friends is canceled. I need to talk about an ongoing show. I know Big Bang Theory. But I really blame I don't blame me. Or you, I blame the nation for not mourning the gang. I feel I like the gang passed. Here's an inter- here, can I tell you guys an interesting fact? Yep. Please. Twelve and a half million people uh-huh. watched Big Bang Theory on May 9th, which was the week uh, before the sh- the show ended. Okay. Okay. The finale episode, eighteen and a half million people tuned in for that final ep. So. That means that here in this great nation of ours, there are six million discreet humans, give or take, who are like, listen, I don't watch Big Bang Theory, but I'm going to be there when they put it in the fucking ground. (laughs) Yeah. I want to make sure you stay dead. (laughs) Stay dead, Sheldo. Stay dead, glasses. Stay dead, other girl. I, I just don't get with numbers like that why they canceled it. Why did they even cancel? Why did they ca- cancel Big Bang Theory? Why? Well, because they wanted to rope in those six million people who were like, "I don't watch the show, but I will be there when it dies. Yeah. I want to be there when the plug is pulled on um, on on Green Lantern and I think the Flash uh, is on there, the Flash shirt guy and everybody. Why did they cancel shows like Big Bang Theory and Friends? Right, guys. I don't get it. No, Travis, you know, you're being I'm a silly. Bit more savvy about what happens behind that beautiful lens that makes <laughs> the friends in the Frasier. And so this is how they do it. Okay. Hey, everybody, come with us to CBS as we mourn the passing of Big Bang Theory, a show you don't watch, but you should. You <laughs> People are going to ask you, where were you when Big Bang Theory went off the air? So please come and watch it. And then you, people, 11 million people were like, yes, yes. It sounds like a Friday night to me. And they showed up and they watched it. And then at the end, everybody else dies, but Sheldon crawls inside of his reverse chrysalis and becomes young Sheldon. And now that's that's 11 million built-in viewers of of young Sheldon. Big Bang Theory never went off the air because it's carried on in the memories of the past of of the character of Sheldon. The chrysalis is reforming around Sheldon. He will reemerge with a new Big Bang Theory yeah. once he has matured. You know, right. I was going to point out that after Cheers, they spun off a series called Frasier. And yeah. that was also popular. And I thought, why doesn't every popular sitcom do that? And then I remembered that Joey was a concern for a while. Love Joey. Um, and that love, kind of answered my question. <laughs> love Joey. Sandwiches. Italian <laughs> sandwiches. Sandwiches. Saying he, was, he had a lot of uh, premarital sex. Premarital sex. Sexual. And he was always interested in people's well-being. He was always like, "Hey, how are you? How are you doing?" Uninvited sexual energy, but we loved it. I guess we really liked all the gay panic. That was gay fun. Panic, Joey. You oh, remember? don't touch me. You're a guy. You know that kind of yeah. thing. Oh, Love what that. Do you, uh, what are we? Oh, uh, what if we hugged? That'd be so gay. <laughs> you know that kind of. <laughs> you get it. How aren't you doing? Because you're a guy, Joey. <laughs> You get it. Ladies and gentlemen, as Joey's dad, Christopher Walken, apparently. Don't Griffin, try. what would it be like if Joey and Joey's dad hugged? Just this, just this one time, Joey, my boy. <laughs> as it turns out, if I try to do Joey from Friends, I can sort of do like sidestep my way into Christopher Walken, which is an exciting revelation for me. Let's take a break. If I'm going to afford the box set of Joey on DVD... I need to earn it's some money. Half, it's half of one disc. It's spit. There's a label on the front of the case saying this is sharp 
please, if you are the type of person who just bought Joey on half a DVD, you shouldn't touch it because it's real sharp. <laughs> please affix this to uh, uh, half of a corn tortilla. Yeah. <laughs> so well, what you do, you get, uh, the, uh, the other half of the disc is just all the episodes of The Cape and you can kind of glue it together. And then as you spin, the cape makes uh, <laughs> some special appearances on Joey. <laughs> it combines them stereoscopically. Yeah. So it looks like Joey's wearing a cape. It's incredible. You, you plug this half of the Joey DVD disc into Sonic and Knuckles expansion pack for Sega Genesis. <laughs> Hey, can I tell you all about MeUndies? Yeah. I'm hearing a lot of background activity. It makes me wonder if somebody's, it sounded like somebody was wrapping a present, if I'm being honest. And I guess the question is, is it for me? Yeah, because it's underwear. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, well. Happy day. Thank you. I, I will always accept underwear if it's MeUndies, because if it's not, it's trash. And that's my new motto that they can use whenever they want. They are the most comfortable so underwear. So Griffin, you're saying if a stranger walked up to you yeah. and said, here, take this pair of MeUndies, no questions asked, yeah. you would do it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're pretty comfortable. Travis, I think it's kind of fucked up that in the middle of our commercial for MeUndies, you would suggest otherwise. But anyway, I have I have so many MeUndies right now, and what I really like about them is because it is the spookiest season of the year, I love to look scary down there. Mm -hmm. And so I have some that have uh, fun. They're fun at the end of the day, but they are still pretty spooky Halloween prints. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you're into cats or blood or skeletons, in a spooky context... They, or hell, you can wear skeleton underwear whenever. Nobody's going to call the cops on you. Uh, they, these are just, they're so fucking soft. And you never have to run out of MeUndies if you get the MeUndies membership. It's a subscription that sends new pairs of MeUndies right to your door. Plus, you can get site-wide savings and exclusive sales. So if you want to get 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash brother. That's MeUndies.com slash brother. Can I tell you about Stitch Fix? Yep. I got the greatest shirt, like my new favorite shirt from Stitch Fix. And it we talk about with Stitch Fix, if you've heard us talk about it before, that like they get to know your style and you know your budget and the colors you like, all of those things. And this felt like getting a gift from like my best friend, where mm. it was this really beautiful dress shirt that had kind of a little bit of like almost like a firework, like popcorn design in, but as part of the fireworks and popcorn was like little tiny skulls. And there, oh. it was so fucking cool. That and is I, cool. Yes, I love it. And like, I literally, I saw it and I like ran into the room where Teresa was to say like, look at this. Because Stitch Fix is a personal styling company that makes getting the clothes you love effortless and they really do get to know you. You can go through and say like, I like this shirt. This is the kind of thing I want to dress for. You know, this is what I like to do. That kind of thing. And it feels really personalized to you. And you pay a $20 styling fee for each fix and it's credited towards any you keep uh, so you don't have to keep everything in the box if it comes you try it on you're like this didn't fit you send it back and you can schedule at any time there's no subscription required plus shipping returns and exchanges are easy and free so get started today at stitchfix.com slash my brother and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix that is stitchfix.com slash my brother for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix stitchfix.com slash my brother are you feeling elevated levels of anxiety? Do you quake uncontrollably, even thinking about watching cable news? Do you have disturbing nightmares, only to realize it's two in the afternoon and you're up? If you've experienced one or more of these symptoms, you may have FNO, news overload. Fortunately, there's treatment. Hi, I'm Dave Holmes, host of Troubled Waters. Troubled Waters helps fight FNO. That's because Troubled Waters stimulates your joy zone. On Troubled Waters, two comedians will battle one another for pop culture supremacy. So join me, Dave Holmes, for two, two, two doses of Troubled Waters a month. The cure for your news overload. Available on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, God. Oh. Travis, run. I'm already gone. Dun, 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 d
Squad. Huh. I don't like this guy. I love this guy. Fuck him. Welcome to Munch Oh, wait, wait. I, I formally in, invite you into our podcast. <laughs> oh, thank beautiful you. spirit. Oh, is he a vampire? I thought he was like a, um, a Frankenstein's monster. Not just any vampire. The Dawn of Dracula. Uh, the Donut, the donut Dracula? Dracula? Count Donut. Uh, Did you just change your name? <laughs> It's a long name, so I'm it, getting it all. So out. is it Count Donut Dracula? <laughs> I think he said. I think he said Donut Dracula Count Donut. Oh, so his yeah. his real name is Donut Dracula, but his title is <laughs> well, Count my Donut. My real name is Kevin, but knowing that would give yeah. you immense power over me. Okay, okay Kevin, Kevin. Kevin, just sit still for just a second, Trav. Just to explain, <laughs> just to explain what just happened. Okay. Justin, in his mind, was trying to run the calculus on whether or not the word Donut sounded enough like count uh-huh. that he could say it in lieu of count and so he said it out loud and heard it and then he uh-huh. said nobody's gonna understand what that meant no, so, no, he switched, no, it's, it's so he different. switched it over to count donut donut you love though i think maybe donut you love also nothing i think he did the best with what he had to work with like yeah. i'm not <laughs> I am the guest host for this most delicious episode of Munch Squad's podcast within a podcast profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. Hey, Count Donut, just real quick. You're better at this than Justin is. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad I killed him. What? You also yes. sound a little bit like Groove from <laughs> from the, uh, the Minions movies. Oh, I, I love those. I have not seen them already. I missed the first few, and I didn't know where to jump on. Yeah, you can get pretty lost if you just come in on Despicable with Me 3. There's three now. I think so. Well, they also I... made a side, side standalone Minions film. I was so excited about the new Minions movie, but then it's got delayed to 2021. Oh, uh, yeah, it's this yeah. coronavirus. Have you heard about this? I... You having trouble with this? <laughs> Everyone's in their homes. Yeah. It's a challenging time. And with a mask on, it's probably hard to sink your teefers into their you're neck. Wa- yeah. You're wearing a but mask, right, Count? I, of course, I am. I am immune to all earthly uh, pathogens, but I want to set a good example. Yeah, that's good of yeah. you. Have you oh. voted? Hmm? Have you voted? Yes, I voted long ago for the devil. No, no, there's a, it's a presidential. It's election. a president. He's not there's on. A, and there's a lot of like Senate and House. I'm a citizen of nowhere. Oh, so you're just living here like rent free, not paying taxes? What the fuck? I am talking to you from my home in Donutvania. Oh, okay. Yeah, Trev, we need to let him speak because I am curious of what he's. Oh, the right. Fuck I forgot that this was here. a segment. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, excellent. Thank you. I want to tell you uh, about the, some new Halloween offerings. It is a spooky time of year, of course. Some Halloween offerings from local uh, donut chains there in your United States of America. Okay. All right, let him let let him rip. I uh, may I adopt the uh, the typical cadence of uh, a classic American as I Please. read these. these. Or else whoa, this episode's going to be eighty seven minutes long. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! I do not consent to that. We can't have fucking eight minutes of Dracula preamble, and then when it comes time for the fucking pearl inside the oyster, it switches back to Justin. Absolutely Hit, not. You made here's this Here's what we'll do. Hypnotize, it wouldn't be Justin. He's dead. Yeah. Hypnotize Griffin so he still hears Dracula, and then you can speak in an American cadence. No, no, he has spoken. Oh he has used his will. Well, I'm going to go get some water. Perhaps... For the last time. Are you going to kill Griffin? Just talk. Nuggets are on notice. Sandwiches be warned and move over tacos. A donut is now heating up the battle for spicy superiority. Proving that the number one brand in donuts can rock a spicy side. Can rock 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 a spicy side? I will have silence. Or I will have your head. 
Duncan has made up one of the most surprising treats ever to rise from its kitchens. The new spicy ghost pepper donut. Fuck off. Yuck. A deliciously daring donut that delivers the heat with every bite. The spicy ghost pepper donut is a classic yeast donut flame. <laughs> Top with a strawberry flavor dicing that you could easily mistake for winka winka blub <laughs> yeah <laughs> and a bold blend of cayenne and ghost pepper ghost pepper yeah we got, yeah, we got it yeah. <laughs> and finished with red sanding sugar for a sizzling look the spicy ghost pepper donut will be on the menu for only a few hot minutes available beginning today for a limited time at participants Eighteen Duncan restaurants nationwide until December. You gotta, you got feel. I know this like sort of solid baked treats are not really your jam, Count Donut. But um, how do you, do you think you'd want to tear one of those bad boys down? I, I do not believe so. I, I because it uh, sounds gross. Because it sounds no, yucky. But I have uh, the my guts. My guts inside um, no longer have the... I, in, yes, internal blood syndrome. Oh. I only can consume and digest blood. Okay, so you're not immune to all diseases then. <laughs> it's not a disease to eat something that disagrees with you. Well, tell that to Griffin. If you put... If, if you put mayonnaise into your car's fuel intake <laughs> and it exploded, you wouldn't go to the doctor and say, my car is terribly sick. Why would I go to the doctor? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and I might. Don't you assume okay. that about me. I might oh, do that. Well, okay. Sorry. I've, I'm sorry. I was... If I ate, if I ate tinfoil <laughs> and started to cough blood, you wouldn't say, get away from me. I don't want to catch it. Yeah. I'm not sick. I, I would just say, ate foil. I would say that there was something wrong with you. Halloween looks a little different this year, and so do our donuts. Okay. While our classic bakery offering has plenty of crave-worthy treats, we're excited to show our spicy side with a donut that packs a touch of heat with something sweet and can be enjoyed any time of day. The fucking cowardice in that quote where they had to say, mm. don't worry, we still have our normal... <laughs> Not disgusting donuts. Not spicy items <laughs> available still. With our scary good lineup of the spicy ghost pepper donut, Halloween DIY Dunkin' Donut decorating kick, kits, and the fan favorite spider donut, Duncan is here to help our guests keep their Halloween spirit alive. Yes, if you're wondering if the opening line, Halloween looks a little different this year, is a reference to COVID-19 in this uh, press release about new donut kinds. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> it is wholly inescapable. Now, hop on my back as I whisk you away to Duck Donuts. Whee! Where, where, where the fuck are we going? What's Duck Donuts? There's 97 of them. It's from the people who brought you Duck Dynasty. All right. I don't know if that is accurate, I but I do know guess. this is accurate. They've got the spooky box. Excuse me? <laughs> the popular spooky box is all about the treats with 12 wonderful, colorful, unique flavor and topping combinations that are as photogenic as they are scrumptious. In a box. In the spooky box. <laughs> It's also the only chance this year to try the three limited time flavors, pumpkin icing, apple, and streusel topping. Ooh. Not the spookiest. I mean, at least the spooky I'd box fuck with is that different. Streusel topping. The spooky box is different. The spooky box features werewolf, which is maple biking with raspberry drizzle. Dunked and worms, chocolate icing with Oreo cookie pieces and gummy worms, blueberry, 
TM, TM, TM. TM, TM. <laughs> Blueberry icing with powdered sugar and spider web, right. which is cinnamon sugar with a vanilla drizzle. Ross DiGiulio, founder and CEO <laughs> I of I thought that Donuts. was another flavor. <laughs> <laughs> and also we have, back by popular demand, Ross DiGiulio. <laughs> <laughs> we have found and ground up another Ross DiGiulio. <laughs> if you or someone you know is a Ross DiGiulio, please do the right moral thing and submit your body to us so that all may enjoy. <laughs> The sixth flavor. Maybe just a few nails. Your hair clippings, Russ, please. We crave you. The most craveable Russ <laughs> to Julie of the year is back. No, here he says, Our spooky box is a joyful and giftable collection of delicious fun. That's right, giftable. If you give it away, you will not be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it's served warm and ready for sharing. We all need something to look forward to right now. So, yes, that's right. Our second reference to the COVID-19 crisis in an announcement about Halloween donuts. Thank you so much for reminding me <laughs> about the ongoing pandemic. <laughs> So appreciated. And thank God it's all fixed now because of your delicious spooky box. The spooky box really balances the whole thing out, doesn't it? Yeah. It's we all need something to look forward to right now. And the fun of Halloween can come soon enough. Bone appetite, booze, and ghouls. Wow. Fuck yeah. Do you think Russ said Fuck that out loud yeah. with his human mouth? Or do you think that's just something yes. he said, like, and then at the end you can write, like, Bone Appetite? Russ, Russ he did a terrible pun and reinforced the imaginary gender binary. <laughs> the <sc> <laughs> <laughs> Now I really trust it, Julio. <laughs> I have decided. Oh, man. Man, Count Donut, I doubted your skills when you first showed up. You didn't know what your name was. But I got to say, you knocked it out of the park with these. Thank you so much. So what's next? Well, can you reanimate Justin's dead no, ass? Oh, he's dead. Okay, Why, can, no, you, can you emulate I Justin? Do. For sorry, emulate him like you be like him. Pretend sure. to be him. Oh, sure, sure, of course. Ah, woodworking Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Good sorry. burn, Counter. No, no dice. No, I won't sleep no more. Sorry, I can't. Yeah. Oh man, Justin has a family. Say something. I mean, try us, a, but try say something about FMV games. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sewer Shark, it's fun game. Good time. Cereal, sorry. maybe cereals or anything. Try cereal. Do with that? Oh, I love to crunch with a relaxing bowl of it. That was actually pretty good. You sound like a mix between Gilbert Gottfried and Olaf. Is that uh, what you were going for? I have not seen. I do not oh, you know. You haven't seen Olaf. Frozen? No, I've seen Frozen. I don't know Gilbert Gottfried. Oh, no, of course. You haven't seen Aladdin. No, I, I have seen Aladdin live action. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Can you say something about a big, beautiful Buick Enclave? Justin yeah. loves them. A big, beautiful Buick Enclave. Oh, God. That sounded great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. See, it's better. <laughs> it is an improvement. No, yeah. Everything you're doing today is better. How about, uh, why, why don't you, Count Donut, take us into, like, our, our housekeeping? Of course. Although I have uh, help with that yeah, around the field. castle. Yes of, course. yes, of course. I could have Renfield do the housekeeping for you if you would like. Oh, I, yeah, I would yeah, that'd be great. sound more like Justin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pass. That's a hard pass. My brother, my brother and me is an advice show, and we so appreciate you listening to the master and these two other uh, uh, cattle. <laughs> Hey, Redfield, fuck you. Yeah. Well, I'll get the couch back, of course. <laughs> yeah. I'm so that sorry. That dude sucks. I agree. Yeah. I told him not to refer to you as cattle to your face. I want you to kill face. him. No, I on. will. All right. Well, now there's blood He's on my hands. dead. I've put him 
on top of Justin's body in a way that would make Joey very uncomfortable. Uh, I get it. That's very funny. Hey, thank you. Uh, Count, there's a podcast my wife and I are doing called Bake On, where we watch and talk about the new season of Great British Bake Off. Uh, we got three episodes out now. It's on your podcatcher as well as on our YouTube channel. Do you think you'd want to check that out? I would love to. I'm more of a fan of video games, though. And I love to listen to Justin's podcast, The Best Things uh, on Caleb, Spotify. You should have thought about that before you did kill him. It's better now. Now I get to enjoy uh, at least 25% more Russ Frushtick. Yeah. At least. It's, I don't know it's Griffin, math. it's it's Russ, and it's Chris Plant talking about video games. Mm -hmm. It w used to be Justin in there too, but of course now he is drained. Dead. Yeah. yeah, of course. It's on Spotify. It's very good. Um, I love it. Count Donna, do you mind if I talk about all of the merch? Because the thought of you, there's a lot. And the thought of you taking the sort of time you would need to talk about all of it uh, scares me a lot. Can you? Can I at least talk about the jump scare pin? Yeah, that's appropriate. Uh, there is a pin of Justin doing offensive fang face of me, Count Donatula. I regret allowing you to do that. It's a jump scare pin, and you can purchase it if you want to reinforce some truly harmful stereotypes okay. about my kind. There's so much stuff at the McElroy merch site, which is McElroyMerch.com. Uh, there is, God, I wish Justin was alive to talk about the horseshoe crab shirt. Yes, his medical podcast uh, with his wife, sorry, Vito, Sydney, right. celebrating horseshoe crabs and their incredible contribution to vaccines. Yeah, um, yeah. Did you know about this? No, I didn't know about that. that. Uh, they have. You can test for impurities in vaccines if you are uh, uh, using the blood, uh, dried blood of a horseshoe crab. That's exciting news. Um, I'll make sure to do that. It coagulates. So sorry, I'm getting hungry now. Listen to me. You feed on horseshoe crab blood? Or just blood in general. Uh, there's also a, t a tiger on the table pen of the month, uh, which was designed by Sam Schultz, and sales of that benefit the Marsha P. Johnson Institute and the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. Uh, there is Candle Knights ornaments uh, designed by Lynn Doyle. There is Candle Knights wrapping paper designed by Justin Gray. Uh, there's a uh, Thanks for Vibing and Keeping It Tight shirt, which I still need to get one of because they're one of my favorite pieces of merch we've ever put up on the store and a portion of the proceeds for the shirt uh will go to the young center for immigrant children's rights uh and yeah that's all at mcroymerch.com there's a there's a lot of stuff okay a couple quick things we're doing a live stream of the game among us on tuesday the 20th at 9 p.m eastern time it's going to be on our macroy family channel it's me and the brothers and probably other family members uh so make sure you check that out uh like we said earlier we wrote a podcast how-to book called everybody has a podcast except you it's available for pre-order now it'll give you like step-by-step -step guide to make a show that you're proud of you can pre-order that at the macroy podcast book.com it comes out january 26th also uh adventure zone crystal kingdom which is the fourth graphic novel in the series is a Available for pre-order. Just go to theadventurezonecomic.com. That comes out July 13th, 2021. I think that's it. Thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for these sort of theme songs that departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Thanks to Maximum Fun. And thank you to Count Donut again for... Uh, of course, it was my honor. I'm sorry about your brother. Uh, it was time. Although it seemed like more of a business relationship yeah. at this point. Yeah, yeah I mean, we both have a spare still. You know yeah, and I mean? you're doing better than he did, really, so it might be an improvement. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, here's another Yahoo by, um, sent in by Merritt Palmer, the prospector. Thank you, uh, It's What happened? Oh, oh man, geez. he's not dead. There's this guy on top of me. Oh, that's uh, Count Donut. He's like Dracula, but for donuts. And the guy on top of you is a dead Renfield. Well, I guess Justin's alive, so you don't need to tweet at him oh, good. about this segment. All right. Or condolences to his wife that, without context, will seem extremely disturbing. But if you do Justin's have anything, fine. you can just tweet at Count Donut. Yeah, that's going to be somebody that we have no quality control on. <laughs> so big, big, big ups to Trav. Anyway, Merritt sent this in. Thanks, Merritt. It's Yahoo Answers user Ramiro who asks. And I'm going to read the question and the additional details because it's important. 
John Travolta dancing in Pulp Fiction. How well did he do on a scale of one to five? I give him a four. He seems like he gave it a good effort and had a fun time, but maybe you feel otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Justin McRoy. I'm Travis McRoy. I'm Griffin McRoy. Full fucking five. Full moon. <laughs> oh, really? I was this is my brother and brother me. Kiss your dad, screw on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.